A video I made at this time last year was my top 10 horror novels of all time. And the feedback I got a lot was, I can't believe you left off this, this, and this. And my response for last year has been, well, guys, if I haven't read those books, uh, which in all those cases I haven't, uh, I can't very well put them in my top 10 horror novels of all time, right? But I like to listen to the audience on this channel. So what I've done is I've compiled a lot of those recommendations, combined it with a lot of things I already wanted to read on my own. And we're going to talk about some horror novels that I haven't read yet. <laughs> Hey, what's up, bookworms, and happy Halloween. It is the best day of the year, and everyone was entitled to one good scare, right? So the top 10 horror novels list that I mentioned earlier, you can catch that right here in case you missed it. It's one of the most viewed uh, videos on this channel, which is amazing because horror doesn't really get a lot of traction on this channel except right there. But again, guys, like I said, I get a lot of recommendations for stuff I left off in that video. And one of the reasons was because I didn't want to put like five Stephen King books on there. And the other one just there wasn't a lot of horror novels on that list uh, that I really had read that had been recommended to me. So uh, I've kind of taken those into consideration here. We're going to talk about those beginning right away, guys. I don't have any honorable mentions. Just going to be the 10 that I plan to read sometime between now and next October. And hopefully when I talk about then, maybe some of these will crack into that top 10. I can do a nice little update for you. Now, number 10 coming in here is one that I was um, kind of bought a while back. And the reason that I didn't read it is because I read Weave World last year and it wasn't quite what I was expecting with Clive Barker. This is, of course, number 10 is The Damnation Game. And this is one of the ones I got a physical copy of. Most of these I do not. But The Damnation Game is when I bought this, a Magicka, and Weave World all at the same time. Asked the viewers which one they wanted me to do for Fright Fest last year, and they picked Weave World. And then when I read it, while it's not a bad book, it was not exactly horrific. You know, it was very much a fantasy story. I said it kind of felt like a different spin on Dark Tower by Stephen King. So I think that that kind of deterred me a little bit from reading more right away. Now with this, this feeling, telling, hearing that this kind of deals with a, like a Faustian story, deals with uh, cannibalism and self-mutilation, I said, well, that sounds a little more like what I was signing up for with Clive Barker as, you know, the good compliment to horror that Stephen King is in the States. So uh, it definitely, this thing, this is the one I want to go with. It's either going to be this or Cabal. I think I was going to go with this one just because uh, I own it. That's the main reason that I picked this one. But Hey, if you got a different, more horrific Clive Barker one that you recommend over Damnation Game, uh, let me know. Not Books of Blood, though. I'm trying to keep this novels, you know, because I don't want to get into, like, collections and things like that. But, yeah, I do want to get more into Clive Barker because I do think that he is a beautiful writer. I think Weave World is kind of, was like, exhausting me to a point where I was like, I, I need something different for now. But I would uh, enjoy because I did do that video about why I decided to go read Clive Barker and then I read one book. I'm not obtuse to that fact that that did happen. So I don't like to make videos like that and and then not uh, follow them up. So uh, again, I'll take any of those recommendations you got. Number nine. Now I just I know I just said that uh, I don't want short story collections or whatever, but I, I got to include Junji Ito on this list because I, I'm, a, I'm a new manga reader. I haven't read very many. Uh, I read his series uh, Uzumaki over Fright Fest, or I'm sorry, Spooky Season this year, and I thought, well. What could really be next? And the one that keeps coming up a lot is Geo. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And I believe that this is more of a collection. So uh, I might be contradicting myself. I don't know. This is the one that I think that gets this or Tomi gets recommended the most outside of Uzumaki. And I liked it enough that I wanted to keep going with Juju because I think that this guy, is, is he does the Lovecraftian uh, sense of dread. The best I've seen since Mr. Lovecraft. So uh, I, I definitely want to get more in there. Uh, if you guys, if this is not uh, one that you think that I should do next, again, I'm always open to recommendations on these. These aren't locked in stone. This is where I'm at right now. But uh, I really enjoyed Uzumaki quite a bit. And I, and I like the, the, the style that he uses. So uh, I wanted to include at least one manga on this list because uh, I'm new to horror manga. I, I haven't read a lot of horror comics. I said, if you don't count like Sandman or Preacher or something like that, and I don't, uh, I haven't read a lot of just exclusive horror comics. And now that I'm getting into manga. And I, I've been saying, I feel like Japan and Korea have been just whipping the pants off the United States when it comes to horror content. And manga seems to be no different there. Number eight, and this is where you're in the ones where I only have the, I only have these either on digital or I just haven't gotten them yet. But uh, this is Turn of the Screw by uh, Henry James. And if you guys know anything about this series, uh, Stephen King listed it as one of the scariest books of all time. 
this is what the Netflix series on Mike Flanagan, The Haunting of Bly Manor, is based on. Uh, deals with a you know like a, a young girl tasked with taking care of these uh, two children at an estate that turns out to maybe be haunted. You know that is the, you know obviously the haunting of Bly Manor. You know you think you're gonna you're gonna have a haunting in there, but uh, I, I like to see why it is the follow up to Haunting of Hill House. Why Mike Flanagan chose that. Why Stephen King has so many great things to say about it. Because when I watched that series, I was like I, I I didn't really find it that scary, but people continue to list this book as just a horror classic. So I really don't have a reason outside of there. And guys, I'm not gonna go deep into these because. I didn't research a lot of these deep because I don't want to be spoiled on them. So I'm just kind of giving a great, like a little blurb on the back of the cover or something like that. It's kind of what I'm going off of. So if you have anything to add on these, please drop in the comments below and let me know. Number seven, this is going to be Ghost Story by Peter Straub. Now, this is one I think is just a classic tale of your past. It's always going to catch up to you one way or the other, right? Now, I will be honest, guys. I read The Talisman for the first time this year, and I was lukewarm on it. And uh, I, I don't know what it was. I mean, I think it's easy for me as a Stephen King constant reader and just a full-on Stephen King honk just to say, okay, the parts I liked of The Talisman were probably Stephen King. The parts I didn't like were Peter Straub. Try not to do that. I'm trying not to do that. But I'll be honest, my lukewarm reception to that book kind of maybe be a little standoffish on maybe I don't like Peter Straub's style. I don't know. So this has been his most popular book that has been recommended to me, especially in that Top 10 Horror Novels video. So that's why I picked it here. Uh, I don't know a lot about him outside of his collaborations with Stephen King. So uh, this will be all new to me here. Like I said, I couldn't even really find a real synopsis of this book without uh, feeling like I was going to start digging into spoilers. So I don't really have a lot to add. But again, it was recommended a ton in that video. So that's why that one is on there as well as number six having a ton of recommendations. Now look, I get Robert McCammon uh, recommendations every time I do a Stephen King video. People always have some kind of comment about Robert McCammon. Now I don't know if this means he's similar to Stephen King. I don't know if this is like, if it's just like Dean Koontz fans who always think they got to say something in a Stephen King video. I don't know. I'm not comparing them to any of those because I haven't read them yet. I don't know what to think. But the one I picked here is Swan Song, post-apocalyptic, like The Stand, but it has been sold to me as in like, imagine The Stand, but from Randall Flagg's point of view. And I said, wow, that's that's a pretty good hook, right? That sounds very, very interesting. Uh, so I, I don't know a ton about it. Uh, if it's anything like The Stand, which is one of my favorite books of all time, just overall, not just Stephen King overall, then sure, I'll definitely like it. It was it's down between this. I, Boy's Life, I didn't feel like it really had as much horror. This one was always listed as a horror novel. But I, I'm interested in Robert McCammon, period. I think uh, Stinger is another one. Uh, I talked to uh, Brian Lee Durfee, the writer of Five, Five Warrior Angels lately, and he really recommended that one. So, But uh, everyone, I think, recommends Boy's Life and Swan Song to me. So uh, you go watch my, my video on The Stand that I did uh, a couple years ago now, and almost all the comments that aren't about The Stand are about uh, Swan Song. So again, that's going to be the reason that it really got, gathered my interest. And, uh, interest. and I'm not going to lie, guys, I love a post-apocalyptic stories. They're just fun, right? Uh, as long as they don't have that the dreaded Y and the dreaded A as far as uh, you know the, the subgenre there, I am very happy to read just about any post-apocalyptic story. Number five, another author that gets recommended a ton in my Stephen King videos is James Herbert. Now, when I did my Why I Decided to Read Clive Barker, I said I always felt like he was what was the, the counter programming to Stephen King for a lot of fans and a lot of people uh, what I actually what I said is I felt like Holly Barker was like the Stephen King overseas or something like that I can't remember exactly what I said but basically everybody said no the Stephen King uh, overseas is James Herbert and so I, I looked him up and of all the ones I read the synopsis for the one that I picked here because it sounded the creepiest was the rats now I've mentioned I am a big HP uh, Lovecraft fan one of my favorite stories of his is The Rat in the Walls. So I'm like, I, I don't know if that has anything even similar to that, but uh, this feels real kind of like Hitchcockian almost and like the animals like rising up like the birds or something like that to, to take on humans. And so, uh, yeah, the, the, the rats decide to attack humanity. So that sounds really creepy cool. Uh, I mean, look, guys, um, I'm not, I, have, I have two fears, spiders and the ocean. So uh, you know, rats, uh, no, am I scared of them? Uh, am I scared of them that there's like a... a, a a few hundred of them coming after me, you better believe I'm terrified, right? Makes me think of like Secret of Nim. Anybody remember Secret of Nim? That movie scared me as a kid. And I was like, are we really the target audience for this? I don't know. They let us watch crazy stuff in the 80s, guys. It was weird. Uh, but uh, yeah, with this one, uh, I've heard so much about James Herbert. And uh, yeah, yeah, rats can be creepy when they are in a horde. So that's why I kind of picked that one. If you got different James Herbert recommendations, please let me know. That was the one, like I said, reading the blurbs for each of the, his most popular books. That was the one that sounded like it would resonate 
with me the most. Now, number four, every time I talk about vampires on this channel whatsoever, I get this recommendation or someone asks me if I read. Now, I have seen the movie, number four here, of Let the Right One In by John Lindquist. Am I saying his name right? Uh, I saw the U.S. version of the movie with uh, with Chloe Grace Martez. Is that what I'm saying? I remember if I'm saying these names right. Uh, the girl in Kick-Ass. The girl from Kick-Ass in the horrible Carrie remake. Uh, I saw that movie, and I liked it quite a bit. I love the ideas of it. So sure, I would love to read this book, you know, but about a, a neighbor girl showing up right when these uh, bodies start showing, you know, being discovered with their blood drained out of them. So I think you can kind of put two and two together there. But uh, there's a lot more to it than that. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. But um, again, I, it's one of those that, like, I like the movie, and I wish it was like an hour longer. So I'm like, hey... If there's a book on this, I definitely want to read it. So not only was this one recommended a lot, this one was already on my radar after I saw that movie about four or five years ago. I really did enjoy it. And uh, I'm always up for uh, new vampire tales, especially if, uh, you know, it isn't that vampires are sexy and stuff like that. My big problem lately with the vampire genre is it just went super sexy young adult. And, you know, sometimes I just want my vampires to be vicious and kill people. You know, that's, that's I think that's what it is. I, I want to make vampires scary again. That's what I want to see happen. Now, something I know is scary. Again, I've seen the movie on the next couple here. And that has obviously driven my uh, interest in reading the books, for sure. Now, the first one, number three here, this is Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levine. And uh, I think that anyone who has read any horror books, uh, you've at least heard of this if you haven't read horror, or if you're a big horror movie fan, I'm sure you've seen it or you know about it, right? Now, a pregnant woman starts to suspect that her neighbors are the uh, head of a uh, satanic cult. And they have an interest in her baby, right? So I think anyone with kids, uh, that's going to sound really, really scary, right? And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's it, it's the movie I saw when I was so young. I probably I had a brother that was five, six years older than me. So it was I was watching a lot of movies I probably shouldn't have been watching at that age. And Rosemary's Baby is one I remember like some imagery, but I don't remember a ton about it. So it's a, it's been a book I've always had an interest in, but never really got to. I got this one on digital last year. I planned on reading it last year, and then I just forgot about it this year. So when I started compiling this list, I was like, oh yeah, definitely. That's definitely one I want to put on here, and it's going to be rather high here. So I don't think I've heard very many bad things about it. I'm stunned that they haven't remade this yet. You know, I mean, it feels like everything that's classic horror movies, they want to remake them now and make them worse for the most part. But uh, again, I don't think I've ever heard anyone say anything bad about this. So I'm looking forward to dipping into that because uh, uh, creepy kids, always always scary. Creepy satanic cult next door, that sounds even scarier, you know? So uh, let's bring that on. Because you think about it, guys, if, if you have kids, you know when you have, uh, when you're when either your spouse is pregnant or, or, or you're a female viewer and you are pregnant, you know you feel like you want to do anything to protect your baby. You're like in super, super like cautious mode. Or when they are a newborn, you are so overprotective of like everything. Thing. So uh, yeah, that's that makes it a little more scary, I think, if you are a parent or an expecting parent. I think that will really, really click with you. It, like I think it'll click with me. Now, number two, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and without a doubt, the uh, the biggest recommend or the biggest uh, I can't believe you left that off this list of my top ten horror novels was. William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. I don't feel like this is a book that anyone needs uh, any kind of explanation about why it would be on a list like this. But it's one of those you think about, man, this was one of the first horror movies I ever saw. I, I can't believe I haven't read this, to be honest with you. Uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, obviously two priests fight to save a young girl that is possessed by a demon claiming to be Satan, right? So, I mean, it's a classic for a reason. I think it's been spoofed forever, and uh, I think it's been copied forever. And then you've got, uh, they're, they're going to be doing the guy, I believe, if the story I heard was correct, the guy that's doing the Halloween, the new Halloween trilogy, Halloween uh, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends, uh, apparently he's going to be doing an Exorcist trilogy next. So that sounds exciting for sure. Because uh, it, it, however you feel about those new Halloween movies, I feel like at least it's being done from a form of respect. So uh, I would actually be on board with that. But, but as far as reading this, guys, I mean, I think that there's so much more that we can get into. I mean, you think about that realistic imagery from the movie, and you know, you can kind of have that in your mind's eye when you go into reading something like this. And I always say when you do it the other, because I always like to read the book before I see the movie now, but now when I go back and I read the book after I've seen the movie, I kind of like to look at it as like, okay, imagine in your head the director's cut. That's kind of what you're reading. I think that's the best way to do it, especially 
with Stephen King adaptations because they are almost always lesser. But in this case, I, I don't know if the uh, the book is lesser or considered better than that movie. But I think it's an all-time classic movie, and that has driven my interest in reading it. And like I said, without a doubt, the most recommended book in that thread that uh, I made last year. So number one, guys, what could it possibly be? Now, I know this is probably going to seem like a trendy pick, but it's a trendy pick for a reason because I think it just people have a very, very hot take on it in one way or the other. They absolutely love it or they think it is absolute trash. I don't know where I'm going to fall. Uh, some people think it's a gimmick. I'm not really sure. I'm talking about House of Leaves by Mark and Daniel Lewski. And now what makes this book so compelling, obviously, is not just the, uh, see if I can find one of the example pages here, not just the uh, storytelling format. You know, I don't know if this is like just part of like the marketing campaign or not. But what I've heard about this is that like this book has been like kind of float it floated around for years as like a cult thing, almost like a snuff film would be passed around or something like that. And they just finally compiled it. I don't know if that's part of the marketing, if that's actually the origin of this book, but it does so many weird things in this book where it like, I don't even know if that's gonna focus, where it has stuff like written upside down, stuff out of context, stuff you've gotta kinda of like flip between different pages to look at, stuff you gotta hold up in a mirror, stuff you gotta read backwards, stuff you gotta look through like a, a twirl on the page and stuff. So it just sounds like a really immersive reading experience. So I wanted to read it this year, but I'd already scheduled a lot of stuff for October, plus we're doing that Malazan read along, so I didn't want to try to force a book like this in because this looks like I mean it's not doesn't look like a, a thin read and there's all these clues and stuff to follow it's one I want to make sure that I devote a lot of time to so this will probably be the headliner next year for October this is one that uh, several people on the discord are talking about joining me on and I, I think it will be a really really fun immersive little treat here so uh, like I said I, it seems like people absolutely are just nuts about it or they think it's just pure garbage and it's just a, a gimmick marketing campaign and you know what that marketing campaign worked if that is not true if that's not the true origins of this book hey they got me you know I haven't researched it enough to know because I'm afraid of being spoiled Spoiled. But I've heard it's like the most unadaptable horror novel of all time for film. And I think that's because it is just an, a part of the reading experience is just how immersive it can be with you really having to participate in the novel to get things to click. So if I'm wrong on that, I'm wrong on that. But that's just how I feel right now. So guys, that was the 10. There are several others I'd like to get on there. And like I said, these aren't locked in stone, guys. So if you have more recommendations, I will always take those. So watch that other video if you have not. It'll let you kind of know uh, what I have already read, what I have not. But uh, hey, uh, if you have recommendations, I am always willing to listen. And I'm, we've got a whole year, a whole year to plan for Fright Fest spooky season, whatever we're going to call it next year. And uh, hey, I can't wait to hear from you. Drop in the comments and let me know, guys, and have yourselves a happy and safe Halloween.